Welcome back to my channel, Nikki in the Kitchy. I'm Nikki. This is my Kitchy in Los Angeles, California, and I'll be making yummy, healthy, plant-based meals. I don't know if you guys have seen my last video, which was also the first video, so go show some support. I will put the link for that right here below. So today we are going to be making cauliflower quinoa meatballs with a coconut turmeric sauce and some spiralized butternut squash to go along with that. It's going to have protein, carbs, fiber, nutrition. What else is there? First we're going to start off with two cups of cooked quinoa and the way I did that was one cup of dried quinoa with two cups of vegetable stock. That's kind of my little tip because usually people cook with water. I think vegetable stock makes it taste so much better. Another tip is that when you are about to cook your quinoa, dry cook it on a skillet before you add any liquid to it because it's going to kind of toast the grains and really bring out a little bit of extra flavor than just automatically soaking it. As a rule of thumb, one cup of dry quinoa equals three cups of cooked quinoa. So I just put away an extra cup and saved the two cups for this recipe. Next, we've got one and one fourth cups of very finely chopped onion. And then we're gonna use roughly about three cups of riced cauliflower. So I just went ahead and got a medium-sized cauliflower and I put it in the food processor to make the riced version of it. Then we have two eggs to hold it together, so this is going to be more of a vegetarian recipe today. You can definitely replace the eggs with a flax egg, so if you want to make this a vegan recipe, it's very easy to do. And we've got some chopped parsley and cilantro. For the meatballs, we're gonna use the parsley and it's about a fourth of a cup of parsley. I've got one clove of finely chopped garlic, a little bit of cinnamon, oregano, some sage leaves, pepper, and of course, Himalayan sea salt. For our coconut turmeric sauce, one cup of vegetable broth, one cup of coconut milk, but this is the other half of my onion and I just sliced it into little slices like that. I've got one lime that I'm going to squeeze into the sauce, four cloves of garlic and about two tablespoons of ginger, minced very finely or grated, a fourth of a cup of sun-dried tomatoes, some turmeric powder, nutmeg, some smoked paprika, of course olive oil. Obviously salt and pepper again are going to be added to that. So for the meatballs I'm just going to start adding in all of our ingredients into a big bowl that I have right here. So we're just going to start by putting in the two cups of cooked quinoa, roughly about three cups of riced cauliflower, and I forgot to mention that I cooked this cauliflower after I riced it in the food processor and then I cooled both the quinoa and the cauliflower before I started making this. So make sure you leave enough time to prep these ingredients before you begin. The mince, one and one fourth cup of onion, chopped parsley, one clove of chopped garlic. We're gonna crack two eggs and put that in here as well. I'm gonna put in about half a teaspoon of salt, about the same with the pepper, about half a teaspoon. A dash of cinnamon, a fourth of a teaspoon of dried oregano. Large pinch of dried thyme. So now you're just going to slowly mix all of this together. So I'm actually about to preheat my oven to 400 degrees and this is going to sit in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and bind together and in the meantime the oven's preheating and we are going to work on the coconut turmeric sauce. What I'm going to do is just cover this up with some clear plastic wrap and we are going to stick this in the fridge for about 30 minutes and then we'll be back. 
All right, so while our cauliflower quinoa meatballs are setting in the refrigerator, we are going to start with our coconut turmeric sauce. I'm going to add in a drizzle of olive oil, sliced onion. So it's been about seven minutes and our onions started to soften up. They're getting more clear in color. It is time to add in the garlic and ginger. I'm just going to go ahead and add this in. So you're just gonna stir this. Don't really turn your back on it for too long because it can burn so fast. So just keep a little eye on it. I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of turmeric about a fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, about a fourth of a teaspoon of paprika, of course, some more Himalayan sea salt, and we're gonna top it off with some pepper. And you're just gonna mix that together for about another minute. Okay, actually I forgot about the sun-dried tomatoes. Just gonna mix that around. Now we're gonna juice our lime. This is one lime, so it's probably gonna give us about two to three tablespoons of lime juice. We're ready to add in the coconut milk and the broth. So I'm gonna put in the coconut milk first and then our broth. So you can just leave this here until it gets to a low simmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the chopped cilantro. And the last thing we're gonna add in here is the butternut squash. All right guys, welcome back. We are ready to start molding our meatballs into place and stick them in the oven while our coconut turmeric sauce is cooking right there. So what I've been doing is molding these meatballs. So I'm just getting a little bit of it to mold into this shape. And I'm sticking it on my greased pan. You just want it to stay in place because the ingredients are still kind of wet, but the egg in there and everything once it's cooking in the oven is really gonna bind it together. But for the meantime, you just need to be a little gentle. I'm just going to continue molding these so we can stick them in the oven. I have finished rolling these into their meatball shape and I've got two full pans worth. Our sauce is still cooking over here and I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in the oven, 400 degrees, and we're gonna put these in for about 25 to 30 minutes. The goal is for them to be crispy and golden. So we're just gonna pop those in and then we will come back and check on them. All right guys, we are back and everything is done. I let the butternut squash cook for a little bit in the pan probably about 10 to 12 minutes. I didn't want it to get too soft because then it gets mushy really quickly, but just enough that it lost a little bit of its hardness from the beginning. Everything is assembled and beautiful right here, so I'm really excited to try this. This is amazing. It's comforting and yummy. You guys go out there and make this and enjoy it. That is all the time I have for today. Make sure you follow my Instagram. It's called Nourishment. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video and I can't wait to see you guys next time.